Hi there, it is always a marginal situation while reporting a case of being harassed, particularly across the avenues of high profile offices. <laughs> According to a report by Ms. Elizabeth Brunig in the New York Times, it is really unfortunate that the rape is even carried out at a high profile level where size of the victims are suppressed enough that one can never report the sexual assault against her. It Good morning. I'm bringing you some sad and upsetting news. And while I don't know the details of the allegations, she's throwing me under the bus. Mitch Kessler, my co-host and partner of 15 years, was fired today. If, by the way, the victim tries to report the illicit, unlawful and illegal act, she will become merely the victim of so-called sympathies of thousands and the millions of the people, resulting in nothing but adding fuel to fire. Even you! She would be known as a pathetic character who was unluckily abused by some high profile office holder. In March, Miss Reed in March, Miss Reed told journalist Kathy Halper on Halper's podcast that she had been sexually assaulted by Joe Biden in 1993 while working in his Senate office. Miss Reed contends that sometimes the unlawful activities of harassment were carried out by Mr. S. Mr. Joe Biden unequally denied Ms. Reed's allegations. Since the and I want to get right to the allegation made against you by Tara Reed. So the former Senate aide accuses you of sexual assault. And please, uh, to our viewers, please excuse the graphic nature of this, but I want to make sure that there is no question as to what we're talking about. She says in 1993, Mr. Vice President, that you pinned her against the wall and reached under her clothing and penetrated her with your fingers. Would you please go on the record with the American people? Did you sexually assault Tara Reid? No, it is not true. I'm saying unequivocally, it never, never happened. And it didn't. It never happened. So the accusations stem from uh, Tara Reid, who in 1993 uh, was a staffer, uh, an assistant in Biden's Senate office. And she has these allegations that she's alleging. So tell us what happened. Yeah, so Tara Reid at the time was a 29-year-old young aide in then-Senator Joe Biden's office. It was 1993, and she tells us that one day she was told to, to find the senator and give him his gym bag. She tells us that she caught up with him in, in what she describes as a semi-private corridor in one of the Senate office buildings. And she says before she knew it, she was essentially pinned up against a wall, that she remembers how cold the wall was behind her. And she says that the senator, uh, that Joe Biden, was trying to kiss her, that he has his hands uh, on her, that, that his hands were going underneath her blouse and up her skirt. She says that her f his fingers went inside of her. And she says uh, that she pulled away. And she tells us that the senator seemed angry with her. She, according to, t to Tara Reid, says that uh, Joe Biden said to her, come on, man, I thought you liked me. And, and she says that she was shocked. And she tells us that she was uh, concerned that about what it might mean for her future. In fact, Whoopi, she tells us that, that she ultimately was forced out of her job, she feels, because uh, of this incident. Do you remember her? Do you remember any, any types of complaints that she might have made? The complaint she <clears throat> may have made, it was 27 years ago, and uh, I don't remember, nor does anyone else that I'm aware of, and uh, the fact is that I don't remember. I, I, I don't remember any complaint ever having been made. Joy? So after the incident, she, she says she, after the incident, she says she complained to the Senate office. What did she say happened at that point? Yeah, Tara Reid does tell us that she did try to report this. She says that she went to the Senate personnel office and complained that, that she was being made to feel uncomfortable. That, that's how she describes it. She did not at the time uh, report anything about an alleged assault. And, and Tara Reid has no record of this complaint. And we've also tried to find this complaint and haven't been able to find it. But she does say that she voiced her concerns within the office, that, that some of Biden's uh, behavior made her feel uncomfortable. But again, she didn't go as far as to allege assault at that time. Have you or your campaign, have you reached out to her? 
No, I have not reached out to her. It's 27 years ago. There, this never happened. And uh, when she first made the claim, we made it clear that it never happened. And uh, that's as simple as that. Complaint. The record will be there. Are you preparing us for a complaint that might be revealed in some way? Are you confident there is nothing? I, 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 I'm not worried about it at all. If there is a complaint, that's where it would be. That's where it would be filed. And if it's there, put it out. But I've never seen it. No one has it, I'm aware of. interview with Miss Halper and ad havoc wetting off Miss Reed's claim has unfolded in the media. Those who doubt Miss Reed's side, the fact that she has exhibited unusual behavior over the years, such as using several aliases, that she praised Mr. Biden occasionally, that she made different allegations at different times, that her recollection of the alleged incident is spotty in place. It is, it is evident that the culture of silence prevails across the corridors and high-profile offices, which is evident from the theme discussed in a renowned TV show of America, The Morning Show, whose certain glimpses will authenticate the prevailing notions about nipping the bud of my life just It is unusual in my experience, as per the reporter, for survivors to exhibit behaviors that seems unstable or erratic to others. They may initially describe close to investigators or journalists only a fragment of what happened and then reveal more over time. So even falsely reckoned either because they sense the police don't believe them or because they fear the consequences of pressing their claims and victims often maintain the relationship with their attackers or harbor mixed feelings about them. Awfully, ad awfully adding, this culture of being raped is quite domineering and is part of working in high profile offices particularly the female gender, whether they are safe or otherwise. Let's talk about in detail related to the prevailing situations around high-profile corporate and public offices where females are to render their duties. Sometimes it is also considered that in order to obtain a high-profile status in a corporate or public sector, the females have to sacrifice their chastity as these notions are quite prevalent in newspapers. And I particularly, this tragic situation is descending from the west to the east, where the establishment of the new corporate culture is on its way of accomplishment. The MNCs and even the public offices are hiring females, and it is considered to be the part of the protocol where the female assistants or secretaries are a must run the administrative affair. But the dark side of this opportunity rests with the happenings of such kinds of events whether it is true or otherwise. It is time to understand the moral codes. And in this context, one should be very much careful, particularly the victims or the females while working in high profile offices, whether they are safe or otherwise. They should keep their eyes open and such kind of culture should be snubbed everywhere in the world, irrespective of the nature of the corporate office. And one should handle such kind of issues with iron hands for the best interests of the females. Your words spoke to America.